Hey everybody, Kanji is here and I am back for another round of Kanji plays and I finished, ooh, I didn't do this thing. Let me turn this on real quick. Because lighting, it's a thing that you need to worry about when you're streaming. There we go, got rid of that weird thing. Oh, my camera lost me. Okay. Hey Kate, how you doing? <laughs> so um, I'm excited because I got through Jaws of the Lion. And when I got through Jaws of the Lion, I was like, I'm playing Gloomhaven. Now, I have, I've had Gloomhaven for a while now, um, and it's just sat on a shelf um, because getting a group together to play Gloomhaven is impossible, okay? For those who are able to find a dedicated group to play this game, I, su I salute you, I, humble, I respect all that stuff, but it's impossible. So um, I'm going to be playing Gloomhaven myself and, because... After going through Jaws of the Lion, this game was so amazing. I have to see what the main game is about. And boy, what, 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 I'm, what I was in for. Um, I opened up the box. So I first got it. I played the first scenario called the Black Bear, which we're going to play tonight. And I played it wrong. <laughs> like, just all wrong. Um, I was like, hey, I had fun with it. But after I went through Jaws of the Lion... I believe everything wrong. So a couple of things that we're going to take. We're going to go talk about BGG, and then we're going to dive down to the table. I'm just going to take a few seconds because this is the intro to kind of go through this. So Jaws of the Lion differences. It's a lot the same. Everything that you go through if you play Jaws of the Lion is the exact same that you're going to go through when you play Gloomhaven. Also, not except, not but, also, so remember when we were in Jaws of the Lion and there was um, city events? City events are in Gloomhaven, but so are road events. So when we leave the city, we have road events that we're going to deal with. And then on top of that, there is the, um, the encounter objectives that we dealt with in Jaws of the Lion. And then there is an overall goal for our characters. And once they achieve that goal, they can retire and we unlock new characters. And yeah other than that it's pretty much the same um you got exposed to a lot of it there's some items that i didn't go through because i didn't pick these different characters i didn't pick the um, demolitionist or the void warden i just had leonard and cody who was my hatchet and uh red guard and they went through what they went through so they have since retired into the annals of history of Gloomhaven and rejoined the Jaws of Lion for more adventures. Now we have a new set of heroes um, coming up. And yes, we will be evolving and, and getting new creatures and new stuff. Um, to start off, I thought I would go with some sword and board and then something not so casual because I heard everyone say things like, the scoundrel's the way to go. You gotta go with the scoundrel and the and the brute because you'll just lay waste to everything. Well, I don't want to do that. I I want to try a class that others have tried because everyone's played it in some way, but I haven't seen a lot of streams on, so I'm gonna give that a shot. And you'll see who that is. Um, so let's get some information, then we'll get down to the table, and then we'll get to all the good stuff. Okay. All right. So, Gloomhaven. What? Number one, across the board, number one overall, number one thematic, number one strategy. It's just the number one game. And it's been that way for a long time. A lot of people don't like this game because they don't want this dense adventure or um, maybe, you know, this, getting a group together for such a dense game is just not going to, it's not feasible, so they can't. So they're, they're like, why waste my time and spend that amount of money? And then there are haters, right? I mean, haters gotta hate. That's their job. So haters don't like Gloomhaven because it's number one and it's been number one forever, so they think it's stupid. Um, but whatever the reason is that has moved you away from it, hopefully Jaws of the Lion will bring you back. And I know there are a few um, uh, people who don't want Gloomhaven because they are like, it's too complicated and... I, I just don't want to. I want to keep it light and everything, and that's respectable. Um, whatever the reason is that you've stayed away from it, I hope Jaws of the Lion fit, fits that bill so you can just say, okay, well, maybe I'll give it a try. Because 
there's a lot. Um, I, I have the box to the left of me, and to keep it organized, um, when I first got the game, I bought the Broken Token inserts, which, oh my gosh, which made the box, like, heavier. <laughs> like, it feels like carrying a, a, a load of bricks. But it organizes it well, and I was able to build out and set the table up in, like, five minutes, no lie. Um, for people who said the setup takes forever, it doesn't. It was the same amount of time it took me to set up Jaws of the Line, which was about five minutes. I got off work, I set it up, and now I'm ready to stream. So as long as it's organized, you should be fine and ready to go. Differences between Jaws of the Lion and um, Gloomhaven. Jaws of the Lion has this beautiful, beautiful book, right? Um, something like this. And when you flip open this book, that's the map. Gloomhaven has actual map tiles because it came before Jaws of the Lion. And those map tiles are a lot of them. I mean, let's not lie. There are a lot of them that are there, so a lot of people might be turned off by that. To me, if Isaac and Cephalophor Games re-releases Gloomhaven with a book, that is, I mean, make the book big, I don't care, but if, they're, if they release it with a book like they did Jaws of the Lion, that will probably be like half of the haters would stop hating. But other than that, it should be good. So, anyway, Gloomhaven, 8.8, .8, but it's number one, and it's been number one for a while. Isaac and Cephalophor know what they're doing. And we're going to enhance it even further. We're going to enhance it because Foreteller, um, has created the, narr the narrations for Gloomhaven on their app, and they worked with Cephal for games. So from session one, I know like they released it during uh, while I was in the middle of Jaws of the Lion, but from session one, we're going narration from Foreteller all the way through, and it's going to be fantastic. So let, let me give my shout out to Foreteller. Let's go there. Um, yep, more Foreteller, okay? <laughs> So let me go to their um, application and I can show you some stuff here. So Foreteller, right? Cool guys, I've chatted with them a few on their Discord channel and they're so willing to help. Um, Jaws of the Line is available now, but they, the, their first release was Gloomhaven. That was the first thing that they released on Foreteller. And I bought that as soon as it was there. And it's... So basically, it, it's about, let me move it out for my big old head. So that's about 15 bucks, uh, this way, 15 bucks for the entire narration of Gloomhaven. That's a, that's a steal to me. Seven bucks for Jaws of the Line because it's 25. 15 for 100 missions. That's a lot of work, and that's a good price for it. So I would probably say if you're interested in getting into Gloomhaven, get the narration because Jaws of the Lion's narration was amazing. <laughs> um, I am not in any way being paid by Foreteller or, or Cephalophor or anything for this. These are my thoughts. I think that Foreteller did a fantastic job with the narrations. So we're going to keep going with that and enjoy it so much, so much more. All right. So let's get down to the table. And remember, oh, Foreteller is free but the narrations cost money. So make sure that you understand that you can just download the Fortale app on an Android or um, iPhone and be happy. Um, so let's get down to the table and let's take a look at this beautiful map that I'm looking at so you can see it too. All right, so this is the map of the world, well, the, the piece of the world of Gloomhaven. And Jaws of the Line was this here, just this section, because we just stayed in the city and we just had city events. But as we venture out into the world, into the Copperneck Mountains and the Dagger Forest and the Watcher Mountains, I love this map so much, and the Misty Sea, there is more. And what's cool is, this is the one thing that I, that, um, I like that they did that I wish would have carried over into um, Jaws of the Lion, is that the, the, you see these little pests, these little things? I know you can't, you can barely see it from my map, but it, you, if you can make them out, they're weird little dots and things that are all over the map. Those are actually the locations of the stickers that you're going to put on the map so that you're not, okay, I6, and you're trying to figure out exactly how to position it. 
they tell you exactly where to put it so you can just put it down and keep going. This map is awesome. There's um, prosperity that goes into the that goes into the map, which is another addition. That means prosperity lets me uh, means that more shops open up, right? So more things to buy as prosperity climbs. And also, if I'm like one of my characters actually dies, with that I can create a new character that doesn't start at level one. If if none of my characters are gonna die because they're awesome. So anyway, but if they do, that's what that's there for. There's also global achievements that tell like the state of the city, so you can see what shape it's in and how's it going. So this map is awesome, and it's not paper; it's actual hard board. The only board <laughs> uh, that that folds out that you get to use, and it's just gorgeous. I love it so much. Um, all right, so. First, we're gonna do. I'm gonna do an intro to the game with which foreteller will will lead, and then from there, um, we're going to get into the first scenario, the Black Barrow, which this book tells you how to set up. And um, we, but first, we have to do a city and the road card, and pick our our lifelong goals, and get our scenario cards. So I'll be doing shuffling and shutting up while you listen to foreteller talk about the intro and the prologue to all this. So let's get Foreteller up and go from there. Alrighty. All right, I'll be quiet now. Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in the Sleeping Lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods. Well, it seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him. Just bring back what is mine. Based on Jexera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So, your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. The Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely, lovely place. So, I've been shuffling while we've been doing it. Yes, Kate, it kind of sort of fits on my table. But we won't be using the map as much. Um, actually, I'm gonna flip it out of the way. We're gonna have our combat area, yay! <laughs> so, um, narration, priceless as always. Now, our characters we've chosen. The Mind Thief. Oh yes. The Mind Thief and the Brute. So we've talked about names for, um, these ones and I've gone I, I, I questioned my patrons and I was like I asked them hey what do you, you know what do you think their name should be and I got some good responses um, one of them for the mind thief I was a blend of two names uh, one of my patrons said it could be Ansel or Tannic and when I hear those two names side by side, it makes me think of a book that I used to read called The Emperor's Blades, where with one of the main characters that was a blending of those two names. And so that will be the Mind Thief's name, which will be Anik. 
So the mind thief is going to be Anik. The brute um, from another selected name that was chosen is going to be Barrett because this is an adventure. <laughs> so we're going to, we have the brute, which is Barrett, and Anik, the mind thief. And those will be our names. So let's, let me get my blind man glasses. And we're going to read about the Mind Thief, because Vermlings, you know from Jaws the Line, I hate Vermlings, so I picked the Mind Thief, right? Makes perfect sense. So the Mind Thief is a Vermling. Vermlings are a scavenging, animalistic race. They feed off the flesh of the dead, and when they can't find any of that, they are more than happy to do the killing themselves with crude knives and arrows. They are primitive and weak-willed, easily controlled by more powerful races with the right combination of pandering and intimidation. Left to their own devices, vermlings typically form hunting packs and spend their short time fu fulfilling basic needs. Some vermlings do make their way into human society, but they are universally shunned and feared in such settings, forced to live in dark alleys and feed off scraps. Often, city-dwelling vermlings will, feel the, will flee to the sewers to escape harassment. There, without their pack to connect with, these vermlings will form strong bonds with the massive rat population. Communication with such a large number of creatures can strain one's mind, though. Where most vermlings fail, some rise to the challenge and hone powerful psychic abilities to control the swarm. So-called mind thieves make terrifying opponent, opponents throughout the use of psychic assaults, sharp blades, and swarms of tiny teeth. And that is Anik. And she's going to start with poison a poison dagger and a minor stamina potion, which is recommended for them to start in the book. So the Brute is an Inox Brute. So let's talk about the Inox, which you can see here. The Inox are primitive and barbaric race, preferring to live in small nomadic tribes scattered across the wilderness. There, they subsist through hunting and gathering, scraping together a meager existence while fighting off the most dangerous creatures of the wilds. What they lack in intelligence and sophistication, they make up for with their superior strength and size. I was eager to prove themselves in a challenge, and, once, uh, and one should certainly take care in challenging an Inox. Their society does not pay much heed to ethics or morality. For the Inox, it is all about survival, kill or be killed. There's a class of Inox, however, who have abandoned their nomadic ways to embrace life in human cities, employing their great size and strength to earn a proper, comfortable living. Disparagingly called brutes by those who employ them, the Inox perform many tasks of menial labor from construction to loading and unloading ships. Less unsavory types have also been known to, to hire brutes as extra muscle. Ideology matters little to the brute when given a chance to show his strength and get paid for it too. So that is him, and he's starting off with a minor healing potion. And uh, even though they recommend in the book saying getting um, boots that let you move faster, I picked the helmet. I picked the iron helmet because what happened to Cody, my red guard? <laughs> that means uh, since he's my brute, he's going to be taking a lot of the hits because the mind thief is squishy at six health for level one. He's going to want to negate those times two modifiers that pop up from what we have to deal with. So let's be, so we're starting off in the city. So let's actually let's start off proper. Let's get them some objectives. Some lifelong objectives. Uh, shuffle those up. Shuffle these good. All right, and then we're going to deal them out. So this is what they're going to this is what their goals are, what they want to accomplish in life. And after they accomplish this, they can retire, which means we unlock a new creature or a new class or a new race that we get to play. So give two and two because you hand two to either of them and then you pick one with what matches. So let's see what we got. Got to put, pull out the old man glasses. So for the mind thief, we have, and let me zoom in for you. Aberrant Slayer or Zealot of the Blood God. And you see it says open box to let you know the new things that we have. All right, so let's read these out. I'll hold it up so you can see. Since birth, you have heard the story of a time long since past when demons roamed the earth and preyed upon the weak. Your ancestors drove them back. 
You always thought this was just a story, until now. Demons are real, and it falls to you to continue to fight. Kill one flame demon, one frost demon, one wind demon, one earth demon, and one night demon, and one sun demon. And that will be what that is. Zealot of the Blood God. Uh, sorry, my hands shake a little. All these insignificant ants scurrying around. None of them know what true devotion is. Devotion is about giving over every last scrap of yourself to something greater. The writings of the old gods demand sacrifice. Only death in battle will bring back the blood god. So in every fight you will give your all. When nothing is left, the, infin uh, the infinite awaits. Become exhausted 12 times. <laughs> so if I become exhausted 12 times, I unlock something or killing demons. What do you think? You decide, let me know. So Aberth, kill, kill, all, kill at least one of all the demon types or result of the blood god, be exhausted 12 times. So that's for Anik. For Barret, we have Vengeance. When you close your eyes, you can still see the two of you as children happily at play. When you open your eyes, however, all you see is your best friend dead. The guards claim it was an accident, but you know different. The guilty must be found and vengeance exacted. Sometimes blood begets blood. Complete four scenarios in Gloomhaven, then unlock investigation. Scenario 57 and follow it to a conclusion. Open envelope X. Ooh. Trophy hunt. You remember that very first time an arrow shot from your bow and pierced the heart of a deer, killing it instantly. That feeling of besting your prey on its own turf, but deer are such easy prey. There is far more challenging game out there in the wilds, and you want to experience it all. You do not hunt in order to kill. You kill because it's part of the hunt. Kill, te kill, te 12, ugh. kill 20 different types of monsters, and then I open a new box. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Jaws of the Lion for the Blood God? Yeah. Seems, seems apropos for, uh, for, a, for a Vermling. I have to learn to love Vermlings because Anik is my character, right? Um, so for him, Vengeance is basically complete four scenarios, uh, unlock, complete four scenarios, then do scenario 57 to its conclusion, and then Vengeance, or Trophy, Kill 20 different types of monsters. What do you think? Let me know. Aberrant. Aberrant for the Mind Thief, it will be. Because nobody, because I'm going with Kate, because nobody said anything else. So, Kate, you have picked Aberrant. So we'll put this other one back in the stack at the bottom. So Aberrant will be her goal. And, ooh, Vengeance sounds cool. Anyone else? I'll let it sit for a second while I shuffle up the um, city deck. And we'll see if anyone has another. And we'll probably go with Vengeance, because an envelope. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Alrighty. These are the city cards, so I have to do a city card, because we were in Gloomhaven before we headed out to the Black Barrel. Duffle for shenanigans. Alright, that'll be the one we choose. Alright, we're going vengeance, Kate. We're going vengeance. So that is there after you finish that. Yeah, yeah. That is done. So Broken Token gives you these nice boxes to put the character um, minis in instead of the bags from Jaws of the Lion. So they actually give you one, and if you notice on here, and I'll kind of show it off a little. So this is, see it even has broken token, but it has, where is it, there it is. It says this is the archer box, and inside there, there are three different types of archers, along with their, um, their modifier cards. So this is a good way to keep, like I said, if, you, if you're able to um, organize properly, there's no reason why you can't get this to the table within five minutes. All right, so 
Vengeance and Aberrant Slayer. Here we go for the city card. Oh, let me hold it up for people who want to get past me. Demon Hunting and Vengeance. Oh, yeah. All right, so let me read this. After a night of heavy drinking, you get turned around while navigating the back alleys and find yourself standing before a collapsed section of brick road that leads down into an underground tunnel. Fueled by curiosity and a bit of liquid courage, you descend in search of adventure, stumbling around in the vast network of tunnels pr proves rather fruitless. However, until a well-concealed passage leads you to a long-forgotten stash of weaponry and dry food. The stuff could fetch a decent price at the sunken market, or you could turn it over to the city guard, which is always in need of arms and rations. So option A, sell the goods. Option B, donate the goods to the city. And it would sell it because the city sucks for her, but Baron is like, the city could use it. We're out on the fringes of nowhere. Hey, hey, Steven, how's it going? We're out on the fringes of nowhere, so let's go ahead and give it to the guards. Donate to the city. Option B. Interesting. You sleep off the previous night's revelries and approach the captain of the guard. This is wonderful news. With attacks on the city becoming even more frequent, our blacksmiths are having trouble keeping up with our demands, and the food should help considerably. If we ever find ourselves under siege, this is truly a big help. Gain one prosperity to the city. Very cool. Very, very cool. I'm okay with that. So we will hold this over here because we'll go back to the map and deal with that in a second. And then, and then, we head out of the city to the Black Barrow and we encounter a road event. This is new because we've done city events before and now we're doing, uh, now we have road events. So whenever we go out, we got to deal with stuff that happens on the road. So... That'll be our road. You see me shuffle for shenanigans? All right, let me hold it up for people who will want to pause it later and not listen to me gabber on, gab, uh, whatever, gibber on, gibber. Okay, and now let's read. So they're like city events, but they're on the road. That's the only difference. Traveling off the beaten path, you're surprised to see a large group of figures on the horizon. You take out your weapons and move uh, cautiously forward. As you get closer, it becomes clear that the figures are not alive, but sculptures of some kind, uh, sculptures of some kind made haphazardly out of branches, garbage, and scrap metal. There are 50 or so in the middle of a field with no other signs of life as far as you can see. You see a necklace that may be valuable on one of them and go to grab it. Don't touch her! You, you wheel around to see an old man in rags emerge from a hole in the ground and charge at you with a broken broom handle. These women are all mine! Oh my goodness. Ugh. Creepy match? Option A, defend yourself with lethal force. Option B, attempt to calm down the hermit and resolve the situation peacefully. Um, so he's a creeper. Oh boy. I don't know. Uh... We're just getting started. Mind Thief does want to, you know, say we, you know, do it. Get it. But we're not going to do it. Uh, we'll attempt to calm down the hermit and resolve the situation peacefully. I should have killed him. I should have killed him. You grab the broom handle and wrestle the old man to the ground, attempting to restrain his flailing limbs. You try to explain that this is all a misunderstanding, but he just keeps warning you not to, not to defecate on his wives. What? The man is surprisingly agile, and the stench of his rags also may, makes keeping him pinned down difficult. He slips free and scrambles around for his broom handle, muttering about the star's gift. You run away with all, with all haste, but his odor is much harder to escape. All starts... In, all everyone starts a scenario with a curse. Awesome. Should have killed him. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah. Alright. 
So while I shuffle up these two decks and put our lovely, lovely curse in, we're going to listen to the Black Barrow as we get into the first scenario and I set everything up. So back to Foreteller. The hill is easy enough to find. A short journey past the new market gate and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpsewood, looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here, you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. Take care of these unfortunates, he says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day you give people stupid enough to hand deliver the valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Joke's on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. You're right, Kate. I tried to be moral. <laughs> I tried to do a good thing and I got punished for it. So, now the brute's mad and the mind thief's gonna be starting making some decisions. Anyway, we started off, I got everything set up, as you can see. I got my element board, which if you want to know where I got this from, it's from Etsy, and I put it in the description below, just in case you're interested. But I got my element board going. Uh, we got the new stuff that's here all set up, and the effects that you've seen before. Like I said, all these are traced from Broken Token. So, anyway, without further ado, Black Barrow. So, um, Barrett, I almost said Cody and Leonard. Barrett and Ack <laughs> are step in. These guys want to kill us. We have one elite and two um, straight and two regular guys, which is the setup from the lovely book, and the door with more that we can't see. So let's see what we're going to deal with. Uh, Barrett is going to. Ooh, yeah, but wind's not up yet for that. X is the number of hexes you move so far this turn for your attack. Holy cow. A balanced measure seems right. All right, so he needs to move. So it'll be a three attack if he can get there. But he's also got this attack three, hitting two creatures for 54. That could work. So we've introduced lovely ranged items that can hit, uh, not ranged, but AoEs um, that that Cody was starting to pick up, but now Barrett has it to start. He can hit one creature for three damage and gain an experience point. I need him to move. I'd probably open up with Balance Measure because I need him to move, and how his, his attack is how much ever he had to move. So most amount of movement that he can do is... That's not cool. Uh, let's see. You can do a move three, which means he'd attack the jump. Uh, maybe. Maybe. He could also do a skewer, but I need wind up. So that's what he can do after he gets wind up. That'll, that's what, that'll be a second attack. Um, 
I think I'll range three because those bandits switch. If you want to see the standee for the bandit, here I'll hold it up a little bit. The voice acting is really good. I love Foreteller's voice acting. So that's the bandit. They all look the exact same, and um, they have the these have six health. He has nine. He has a shield, and they hit for two, and he hits for three. So they're already pretty heavy hitting. So let's see what we're gonna do. Uh, I definitely am doing this movement to get wind up so I can skewer next. But what is my attack going to look like? Or he can just do a move to an AoE arc, but he would have to go first for that to happen. Um... Wish I could hit more than one. Ooh, attack three and pierce. That will work. So his initiative is going to be, his initiative is going to be 54. He's slow, but he hits like a truck. The mind thief, Anik, is going to, he does nasty stuff. She can go invisible. Awesome. All right, so uh she has these lovely abilities called augments they come out and they buff her up and they're out until she drops another augment which is pretty cool if you end your movement in the same hex you started in perform a muddle attack to all enemies you move through Ooh, that could be nice so they're probably going to hit me really good on the first strike her second strike ought to be interesting. And she has a move three attack. She has an attack and push. So you could do the attack and push possibly. Like I said, I'm learning how to play her because she's completely different than any other. She's completely different than Leonard, even though she's blue. <laughs> she's super squishy. Force one enemy within range five to perform an attack, targeting another enemy while you can, with you controlling the action. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yes, that's happening. Yes, yes, that is happening. If she goes first, uh, you can drop this augment here. Actually, she might want to go invisible. No, I need her to move. I need her to move it, move it. Um, she is going to... So I'm thinking about what she's going to do, right? First of all, she's going to do this move and muddle because there's three enemies, there's the two of us. There's the times two somewhere in there and I don't want her getting hit because she only has six health. So she could die quickly. Um, so this move and muddle can work where, it's, where she... If you end the movement in the same hex you started in. Oh, oh, let her get closer. Let her get closer. So, this movement's done. Visible. Move and heal. Attack two for a stun. Yeah, that's what she's going to do. Um, so she is going to... Actually, that wasn't smart. If this is smart, if you want to try, pick up Jaws a little bit. This seems to be a lot of strategy here. I'm a new when it comes to Gloomhaven. So, Steven, I don't know. I remember I was talking to you previously, and I was saying this. It looks like a lot of strategy. It's not. That's the thing. That's the, I think that's the thing that scares people about Gloomhaven is that they feel that it, it looks complicated. It looks like it's way too much, and I forgot to deal these two parts. It looks like it's way too much. And remember, this was game one, so me getting their backstories and the road events and stuff set up seems daunting. It's not. It's not at all. And just like Kate said, if you are looking to get into this game, and Steven, I know you will love this game. I know you will love it so much. And, but if you're looking to get into it, buy Jaws of the Lion first. It is a great entry to this game. I, I was overwhelmed by Gloomhaven and didn't play it because I felt overwhelmed. I got into Jaws of the Lion, couldn't stop. It was, it was so good. And it was such a great entry point. They step you through everything mission by mission. So you don't feel like you have to learn everything at once. 
and from there you're just good to go hey elizabeth how you doing uh, so my recommendation is if you're interested which david you're going to love this game but if you if you're interested get jaws of the line first before even touching gloomhaven and it's okay it's thematic because jaws of the line is a prequel to gloomhaven so you can, you don't feel like you're bouncing ahead in the story or missing something there might be something that comes up in Gloomhaven that happened in Jaws of the Line where I'm like, hey, that's a thing that happened in the past and that's great. So I'd say do that. That would be my recommendation. But I, I guarantee you will not be disappointed. I know you and I like the same type of games and stuff, so I know you will like this game. Uh, opener and purist, be the first to kill a monster during a scenario or use no items during the scenario. And get two check marks. Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And bottom. I'm just doing this to speed this up real quick. Hey, Elizabeth. Um, Straggler. Take only long rest during the scenario. Gain 13 or more experience points during the scenario. Straggler. Take only long rests. All right, we can get back to it. Uh, what was I doing? Uh, she was going to, she needs to be able to move. And I need her to move so she can do her next move. That's, that's the big thing. So I'll have her move four. And, um, And she'll do fruit. So she'll move four and she will range five. No, she won't, because I'm not losing that card. She will Oh, you're a dash in and out type of person. You're like a rogue. Okay. So she'll move four and she will attack um two with push. And her initiative will be twenty seven. There we go. We're ready to go. Enemies initiative, because... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Steven, you, you will, for sure. Enemies initiative is 70. All right, so first person going is Anik. Anik is going to... Ooh. Didn't want Anik to go first. <laughs> I wanted him to go first. But Anik will move one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Oh boy, she's gonna die. And then she's going to attack for two, giving her one XP, and push three. So that's what she's going to do. So she's going to attack for two with her modifier of minus two. Hey! So nothing. Nothing happens at all with her. She's probably going to die. Barrett's turn. He is going to move three. One, two, three. Popping up wind for round one. Um, and then he's going to attack three, pierce two. So. Pierce is a new item, right? Because Pierce wasn't in Jaws of the Lion, they didn't want to cloud it for it. So what Pierce does is it basically negates shield. And it negates shield up to the amount number that's on it. So Pierce 2 means if you have a shield that blocks 2 damage, I cut right through that and in your face. So he, he has a shield of 1. I'm hitting him for 3 with Pierce. So I hit him for 2 damage, which is what he takes, number 1. So he takes two damage with Pierce. So he doesn't block anything. And that ends their turn. Uh, I usually put it here. I like it when the boards are narrower. <laughs> their turn, their move minus one. So their movement is three and two respectively. So this one's gonna come down here. These two are gonna hit Barrett and he's gonna hit Annie. So, they hit for, this guy hits for two, plus his modifier, three. Anik takes three damage. Anik's down to three health. That is going to hurt. <laughs> this guy is going to attack Barret for three damage, straight up. 
So Barrett goes from from ten to seven. And then this guy's gonna attack Barrett. Oh my gosh, for four damage. So this is not looking good already. So one, two, three, four. Oops, down to four. They are hurting already. All right, end of the round, round two. Win wanes. And let's see what we're gonna do next. But she's gonna do that lovely move to, to muddle everybody. Jump four. And what jump means is that, like, I can't move through an enemy, but with jump, I could jump over them. So I could do like one, two, three, four, and then muddle those two. Uh, which is the plan, but she's also going to try to attack. I have a negative fish on you. I don't have a negative fish on you. I can slide you for three in the face. So we're going to do that. But her initiative is going to be 29. He is going to burn this heal already <laughs> to get, uh, that gives us three health, so seven, so I'm back up to seven. And it's squishy, <laughs> Barrett also squishy apparently, yes, yes, this is true, uh oh, this is discard, um, but Barrett have skewer, Barrett you skewer, so, um, Actually, Barrett was in range to do this lovely leaping cleave, but screwed pooch on that. Um, Barrett is going to he can retaliate. That means he's going to take a hit, but he can retaliate. Uh, but I want him to hit somebody in the face. Um, he doesn't have to move much. I see what that means. So he's gonna attack two with this arm. And then he is going to heal to range. So his initiative will be 10. He's going first. Uh, their initiative is going to be 50. So he goes first at 10. And he is going to attack and try to disarm this nerd for two. That's my happy dance. Times two, four damage on you. So four damage on that guy, but he has a shield. So he blocks one, so he takes three, so he takes five damage. So he's up, he's down to five, should I say. And he's disarmed. What does this arm mean, you, you, you would ask? And I would be so happy to answer that for you. On this lovely, lovely card, cannot attack. That's what it means. So, what else? And then he is going to heal himself for two. Uh, mm, no, he'll heal Anik. He'll heal Anik for two. For nerd five. And that'll end his turn. Anik's turn, which he did that already, this one. So she is going to attack this guy for three, well, that guy suffered five. He need four damage to die. I could kill him outright. This guy has six. There's no way I have a times two. I can't pull a times two twice. That's just crazy. So, um... She is going to, yeah, she's going to attack Mr. Yellow. For to, he takes two damage. He has a shield, so he takes one damage, so he's at six. And then she's going to do her move jump the muddle. And she moves four. One, two. three, four, and it says, if you end your movement in the same hex you started in, 
Perform muddle. Target all enemies move through. So number two. And number one. Muddled. And what does muddle mean? Disadvantage on attacks. Remove at the end of next turn. The end of next turn. <laughs> so uh, that ends her turn. Their turn. Number two is going to attack Anik. Disadvantaged. So it is um, two minus one, one. So she takes one damage. Elite guy is disarmed, so his attack is O-V-E-R. And then this guy's going to hit him for two minus one, one damage. Okay. Next round. See how easy that stuff goes? And this nut times two, at the end of the round is when it gets reshuffled back into the deck. That's a reshuffle. Hey, Rory, how you doing? <laughs> Say, hey, Kenji, how's everyone doing? And I'm excited for Blue Maven Killings. You'll be back in an hour. I will either be dead or have won in an hour. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm trying out the Mind Thief. It's a completely different style of play, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So reshuffle them. All right. What are they going to be doing? I really wish I could move him proper. If I could get him one, two, three here, I could skewer. Oh, wait, I did a thing. Did I miss a thing? Uh, at the end of the round, wind wings right around. I was supposed to use fewer then, but I did not. Sad thing. Sad. Um, any throwaway abilities? They annoy me. Can you move three at all? So I have to inflict damage before I move. I can do an attack of two. I need to kill this guy. And then an attack of three and a push. So his initiative is going to be 27. Annex initiative is going to be heal herself. I want her to do some stabby stab 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 stuff. Yeah, she'll drop an augment. Yeah, she'll drop an augment so she can kill these people. Uh, her initiative will be 11. Their initiative will be 15. So they're split in between. So Anna goes first. Anik is going to is going to uh, drop down this augment of mind weakness, and she is going to attack for her melee attack. So it's an attack one. She'll get another XP. Um, she will attack. Ooh, this guy's almost dead. Why not him? <laughs> so she's going to attack him for one. Oh, he has a shield. That's why not him. She'll attack number two for one damage. Actually, no, that's a lie. Three damage. So it says on her card, on melee attacks, add plus two to your attack. So she'll attack this guy for three. And let's see. Two. <laughs> and he blocks one. Out of the moment. Uh. And he blocks one, so he takes one damage. So he's at seven. I cannot kill this guy. He's killing me. And then she's going to move two, one, two, and heal two. So she's back up to full health. And that will end her turn. Their turn. They shield up. <laughs> now it's their turn, and they shield up. And they attack, and if they hit, they inflict poison. 
So, but they don't move, so this guy isn't doing anything. If it doesn't say move on the card, they don't move at all. So these two are going to try to poison him. First, this guy's going to attack him uh, at the end of the next turn. So, so the minus one. So it is three minus one, two. So he takes two, so he's down to four. Uh, and he is poisoned, which means poison means whenever they get hit, and this is in Jaws of the Lion, uh, um, it basically mean um it basically means they get plus one more damage on them. And this is the reason why I say use Jaws of the Lion, because on this card it says extra damage when attacked and prevents healing, remove when healed. Extra damage, so you'll say how much is extra damage? It's plus one. So He's going to attack him for 2 plus 1 because he's poisoned, which is 3, knocking him down to 1 health. And that ends, and oh, no, it doesn't. And then it's his turn. Oh, boy. Okay, so he already used a heal. I don't know if Anik has a heal for him, <laughs> but this is not looking good. I might have to change. So he is going to attack this guy for three because I'm spending so much time fighting that guy. So three, two, so six, seven, eight, nine, which is finally enough to kill this guy. And when they die, they all drop a coin. And that is, that's with push. And then he's going to attack this other guy, which is a complete whiff and a miss. He might die. Actually, he's probably going to take a long rest so he doesn't die. Um, so in the middle of a fight, when you're fighting, um, yeah, that's horrible. When you're fighting, you can um, take a long rest. And when you take a long rest, you heal some damage. But that's your turn. And you lose a card, which you would lose anyway because he has four cards left. And, and he, none of them have heal on them. So he needs to make this work. Uh, let's get to the next round. Round four. Anik, help him, please. So Anik's going to employ... She is going to employ this mind control, submissive affliction. And then she's going to do a move and attack. And hopefully we can kill one of these creatures with this. Because this is not looking good for our start. So she's going to go at 20. I need her to go first. <laughs> he is going to... I want you to lose these cards. Attack is how much you move this turn. It can just be for two. Blech. Um, I gotta keep him alive, so I'm gonna shield. I'm gonna do Wall of Doom. Ugh. Yeah, I gotta keep him alive. So he's gonna just shield up this turn. So his initiative is gonna be 15. Their initiative, because of the circle at the bottom, I put these back in and reshuffle. Yeah, this is, looking, this is looking rough. Par for the course for me, though, don't you think, though? Chaos bags, dice rolls. Why not cards? <laughs> All right, so their initiative is 15, which is the same as his. He's going to go first. So he is going to... And when they're tied up, you get to determine who's going to go first. So he is going to shield himself up for one. And then he's going to activate Wall of Doom, which is Retaliate. He's going to get two experience for it. And he's going to shield himself up for two more for this entire round. Now, he has a shield of three. And he has Retaliate to hit for two. So what does Retaliate mean? This is a new feature. Attacker suffers damage. So they'll take two damage if they hit me. If they attack me, basically. So... Let's hold three shield is enough to hold. So they, uh, that's me. Their turn. They shield up, so they have one shield, and then they're going to attack and try to poison. He's already poisoned, so this guy's going to try to hit him. 
for two. He has two, he has three shields, so he blocks all the damage, and the guy takes two damage for hitting him for retaliate for that. So, yep. So it's two plus one because he's poisoned three, but I block all three. And I lose this card because of this at the end, so it's a way to keep me alive, but I keep that one. That ends the round. So you see it's going in a rhythm. Um, <laughs> probably kill this guy. I need them to line up so I can skewer him. Um, yeah, let's try this out. His initiative will be no. <laughs> He's poisoned too, so yeah, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. His initiative will be 35. The Mind Thief's initiative is going to be 8. Reshuffle. <laughs> and it, oh, and it didn't take her turn. Thank you. Even two, two characters. Anik didn't take her turn. So Anik is going to um, range zero. Uh, anyone that's five. So force one enemy within range five to perform an attack targeting another enemy you're controlling. So, and their range is actually, okay. that won't work. Because it says range plus zero, and they don't have any range. At least they need them to have one range. Um, the shield do a move and attack first, and then we'll figure this out. Yeah, she'll do a move and attack first. So she'll move here for her move three, and then she'll attack one. Uh... Yeah, and then she'll attack for one, plus two, three, but remember they had the shield one, so two damage to that guy, so he's at four. And then she is going to force one enemy within range five to perform, to perform a melee attack. Uh, she can't, so it'll be another move. Uh, but she's not going to move, she's going to do that. And that'll end her turn. Now, final final rounds. 8, 35, shuffle. No, 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 you were right, Kate. Anik missed her turn. I was hurting myself even further <laughs> unnecessarily. Their initiative is 50. So, uh, Anik goes first. I could have used this. So, uh, Anik's going to move one. Move two, one, two, then attack range two for one attack on that guy with a stun. So if I hit him, I stun him. And I hit him. Um, it's, it wasn't a melee attack, it was a range attack for my augment that's out that I threw away that I should not have. Um, but I still hit him, so he takes two damage. Number two. And he is stunned. What does stun mean, you ask? Well, simple enough. Cannot do anything but rest. <laughs> Remove it end of next turn. So he's, his turn's forfeit. Whereas um, disarm means you can move, but you can't attack. Stun means you're just screwed. And he hit him for two. She hit him for two, and then she's going to power up ice and dark. Because the top part of the card... So. For people who are just kind of looking and learning, you can do when when you you can play two cards, whichever initiative you choose, whatever you choose. But when you play your two cards, you can only do the top half of one and the bottom half of the other. So for this, she did the stun here, so she can't say, "Okay, well I'll go invisible." She has to do the top half of this one, and that ends her turn. His turn. 
He's gonna move six. Yes. Two. I'll be discarding a card. Nope. No, he's not gonna move. He's gonna. He's gonna. Um. He's gonna stab that guy. So he's gonna skewer that dude. Um. For three damage. Let's reshuffle this madness. Uh, I miss Leonard and his go and his goggles. <laughs> To stop this foolishness from happening. I haven't even gotten into the next room yet, and I'm already struggling. This is crazy. Alright. So... So he's hitting it for three. Minus one. Two. Two damage. He has four on him, he dies. Uh, it drops a coin. So that's the skewer, plus I get an XP, which is three. And then I'm gonna move for the amount of damage that I did, which is two. Yeah. He's gonna go there. <laughs> that's gonna end this turn. Their turn, he's gonna move up here to hit Anik. And hit Anna Q. Oh, no, he won't. No, he will not. He is stunned. He sits there and he looks dumb. So that's the end of his turn. All right. We, ha we ran out of cards. So what does that mean? That means that now we either have to short rest. And when we short rest, we basically flip these over, shuffle them, and then randomly pull one. Or we long rest. And that means that we, we heal two, look through one of these cards, and discard one. So we get the, with long rest, you get to choose which card you're discarding, and you long rest. With short rest, it's anybody's game, and you get to go. When you long rest, that's your turn. When you short rest, you get to go. So um, with him, I'm going to long rest with him. So he's going to get two health going up to three. He probably still could die. And he's going to lose. And when I say lose, I mean for the entire scenario. Here we go, yo. Uh, all enemies move through. Nope, trample will work. I'm not losing that. I need win to do some damage. Any enemy who targets one of your adjacent allies with an attack this round targets you with that attack instead. I'm going to get rid of Provoking Roar because that ain't happening for a bear right now. So he rests. That's his turn. Anik, however, is not going to do that because she needs to go to kill this chump because he gets to go. <laughs> so she's going to randomly discard, especially since she's at full health. And I can't use any items during this scenario just so I can get those two check marks. And those two check marks are key. So she is going to randomly lose this card. Aw, oh, that was a good one. But she loses that. Alright. So she gets to go. He gets to go. So what is she going to do? Well, she gets a plus two on her attacks this round. So she needs something that... But only melee. So she could do a move three, attack one. And she can't go invisible. <laughs> because he will die. Um, and she will do the attack two to stun. So she's going to try to take this guy out quickly. Uh, no, she's not. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. So initiative is eight. His initiative is 55. Ooh, and he's going to hit hard if he hits. She goes first. Barrett's out because Barrett's initiative is basically 99, and it's to rest. So he sits there, and he's not going to... How, how to play it thematically is he just kind of plops down, everyone goes, and then he heals and gets rid of a card. But I like to do it this way. How much of the card effects you can use. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, Steven. So you can't, yeah, I'm picking, so I'm going here and here for this. So she goes first because her initiative is eight. And she's going to do that two attack again and try to see if she can hit this guy and stun him. 
Oof. So she attacks for one, minus one, which is zero, which is no hit. So I don't stun him. But I do... Oh, this was supposed to wane. This goes back up, but I do get an XP for doing it. And then she is going to move up, and she's going to do a melee attack now. And she's going to attack plus two because of her augment. So three coming in. Four damage, which is enough. So four damage for six kills him. I lived, I lived. And that is one. So you're like, oh, did, you, did we win the scenario? No, that was just the entrance. <laughs> so um, this round, and rounds keep going. Rounds keep going. There's poison still here on him. The rest did not get rid of poisons because long rest, it says on this, lose one, discard, and recover the rest. Heal to self and refresh any spent items. So this isn't a spent, this is a, like a drank item with the X at the bottom. So if it didn't have the X, if it had this symbol, when we tilt it, saying that we used it, when we take a long rest, we tilt it back so it's back in effect. So that's what that means. But I don't heal from this. So next round, which this wanes, that wanes, rounds, and we'll, we'll just be in movement so I can just kind of step everything up. So he is going to move. Grief. He's probably going to heal himself too. So he's going to move three. And I need something that's kind of like a nonsensical attack. And I can lose this round. It won't make me sad. Ooh, I for now would heal, but no, he needs that heal. He's probably going to do that to get that poison off. He'll heal. And let, I'll let, um, I'll let Anik open the door. So he will, what can I lose the top here? He'll do a regular two attack. That's what he'll do. So his initiative will be 15. Her initiative is going to be to move. She doesn't need to heal, so she can do the move four. Then the loot one. That's what she'll do. So her initiative is 14. This is 15. And nobody else is left to go, so I don't have to look for whose initiative. So she goes first. She is going to move. Uh, actually, she's going to loot. So when, she, when loot one, that means every hex around you in one space. If there's stuff, you loot it. So she is going to loot these two. Get that gold, fire up dark. And then she's going to move four. So she's going to go one, two. Then she's going to open this door before her, she finishes her movement. Now let's see if there's something going back to foreteller. Nope. So when I open the door, fun things happen. Fun things happen indeed. Fun thing. <laughs> and the book is basically telling me how to set it up. And when you get when you get um Jaws the Line, it'll it'll do the same thing. So there is a guy here. There is a guy here. And there's an elite archer. Oh yes, range pain. Because that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I've been asking for. Death. And she is yellow. All the way back here. So what do we do when that happens? We get their um, attack sheet, which I've already set out for us. Move these over here. And we put them. So that's the archer. She has seven health. She has a range of five. She can hurt me and kill me so easily. So let's put these ones. And I didn't get a reshuffle yet, so the times two is in there somewhere, but so is the miss. So I'll put these here. Put those there. Shuffle you up. And then we just shuffle them up into the order. Shuffle them in. 
<laughs> Ready for more fun things. Oh yes, oh yes. 68 is her initiative, and they all died, so I have to reshuffle this. Initiative will be 70. Okay, so she opens the door for two, three, four, and stops there. So, picking up money. You have to end, unless you use an ability that says loot, you have to end your turn on the hex with the money to pick it up. Otherwise, you just move through it. There's no running and scooping. You have to stop and be like, ooh, a nickel, and then pick it up. So his turn, he is going to heal himself for two, which gets rid of this. So when you heal poison, you don't heal. You just get rid of the poison. But if she does poison, I'm going to be sad. So he heals himself for two, powering up life. And then he's just going to do... So this is the interesting thing, and I want to scroll in to show you this, because you're learning. Is setting up the minions for three characters. Yeah, yeah, I'm making it... I'm, I'm not doing too well. Death by pointy projectiles hurts. So check this out. You see these two things in the, in the, on the end? And like I said, when you play Jaws the Lion, it'll all make sense. This is not confusing at all. I can follow this card so quickly because of Jaws the Lion. So... Here's the abilities that you can do. I can either do shield my... Well, I have to. Um, I have to do the top attack. But this a top attack says that if I do it, I have to get rid of this card. I have to take it out of the entire scenario. I don't want to do that. So what I can do is this lovely thing here, which is an attack of two, that negates this stuff at the top, and I don't lose this card. And that's what I'm going to do. And it's a wasted attack, so... Because nothing to attack, and that ends the turn. Um, that doesn't end the turn. That ends their turn. Then it's these people's turns because they come in right where they, they should be. And the archer goes first at 68. So she has a range of 6. So she can't hit anybody. And unless it says move, she don't move. So she doesn't go anywhere. These nerds are going to move. And their movement is 3. And because it has the move ability, but it's minus 1. So they only move 2. So, one, two, one, two. And they melee attack. No one's there for them to hit. So, meh. That was very close for Anik. Next round. <laughs> These nerds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I call them nerds and jerk fakes jerks and all this other stuff because... Oh my gosh, they can hurt. <laughs> they can hurt pretty bad. Um... That archer can kill Anik with one shot. No, no, she can't. She does three damage. I was about to say. <laughs> I was like, that's ridiculous. Um, so I need him to move and then hit. That's what I need him. On the next six sources of damage targeting you, shield one. Yeah, so he's going to pop that open. Well, no, I need you to move. Move it, move it. All right, so you can move here, pop this up. Did I lose my AoE? Did I use my AoE? Oh, now it's here. They're perfect for this. I just need to get in range to do that attack on them. And his movements are annoying because it's like... Any movement, I lose a card. On the next... And I need you to move forward, my man. Uh, not ready to do that one. That archer is way too far back. I probably need to use skewer and get rid of that card when it comes to fight her, but I need to get to the door. Where X is the amount of damage you have, in, you have inflicted so far this turn. This is a move four that'll get me there. I'll attack two to somebody. To all enemies move. Oh, to all enemies move through. Ah, bad decisions. Did I lose something that could have helped me? No, I did not. This movement is trash. Three would get me there, but then I can't use this leaping cleave to hit both of them for three. I need to get there, and then cleave them. Um, 
and these. No, that wouldn't help me either for those. So I want to use this somehow. I can't. I can't use it right now. Um, I can move three and then do an attack three, pierce two. Or yeah, let's try this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna play I'm gonna play this where it is. So we're gonna do 54 says initiative. And you're like 54? That's crazy. Nope, I got a plan. I got a plan, I got a plan, I got a plan. Anik, however, needs to uh yeah, no. Um so she's gonna do that. And where's your range attack, lady? Oh, you've been fighting, that's why. <laughs> That's why. Um, he can do. Cold is still up. Oh, this is Nero. Cold would have gone down. Nero. So, like, if Cold was up, I could do something. Oh. Let's see how this works. So she is going to go range, ele uh, range 11. She is going to try to kill these guys quickly. So she is going to make her initiative 11. She is going to move. She's going to attack um, them at range to disarm one, losing the stupid thing. And then she's going to move and try to muddle them. So her, her initiative is 11. We reshuffle the archer. You're still on card focus. Oh my goodness, I am still on card focus. There we go. I I didn't do anything just yet, so you didn't miss anything. It was just decision making and me prattling on. All right. So the archer's initiative is sixteen, and it goes first. Good grief! And the guard's initiative is thirty-five. Okay. So, and it goes first. She is going to one, two, three. I can only do it to one of them. I can only muddle one of them, and that's okay. So she's going to look through the door and be like, Bing! and she's going to attack that guy, yes, with that, with that sound. And she's going to attack this guy for four damage and disarm him if I can hit him. If I can hit him. And I do. And she gets two experience for it. So she goes up to five experience. Ice pops up. Um, he is disarmed. Number two takes... Four damage. Four damage. And is disarmed. And she gets two. That powers up. And then she's also going to move and try to muddle. So that works. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and that guy's muddled. If you're going to hit her, it's going to be with disadvantage. She loses this card. This one goes into discard. Uh, next up is the archer who can move two, but plus one, three. So one, two, three. Range five. One, two, three, four, five. But she's two. So line of sight is important. The door is open, but unless you're at the door area here in the hexes, you can't, like, she can't shoot somebody all the way over here or over here just because the door is open or even here. And it's like at the side of the doorway, and she just kind of leaned out, shot, and then leaned back. So she has to be at the door to have wide view of this room, or in Hex is close to the door. So um, she does nothing. You do nothing. And then uh, it is their turn. Okay, so they have a move minus one, so they move three. So one, two. Yep. One, two. Hope this works the way I think. One. One. Which gets him in front of their... T oh, no, he doesn't go anywhere. He's stunned. Oh, no, he's, he's disarmed. He can move. One. He can move. He's just disarmed. He can't attack, but this one can attack, but with disadvantage. So this one's disadvantage is plus one or times two. You get plus one. I'm not mad about that. 
Uh, oh, it would have been it would have been ranged. So he'd have been here. He'd have been one, two, range two. So now it's plus one times two, plus one. Sorry, plus one. He missed the times two. Uh, he would do three damage to Anik. So Anik goes down to three health. And that's all he's got. This one's disarmed, so he does nothing. Um, then it is Barrett's turn. We can see! <laughs> so now it's Barrett's turn. Uh, Barrett, you didn't do what I hoped you'd do. Actually, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I'm going to use the move two, one, two, and then I'm going to cleave both of them for three damage each, plus one XP, which puts me at four. So three damage each. Two damage to number one. Four damage to number two. Number two is dead. And that, and he gets, yeah, he gets, I got the one XP for it. So that ends his turn. And everybody's gone. Next round. Wayne, Wayne. Go to the next round. So, and then I got to reshuffle their, their modifier. Um, let me make sure I do that. That is. Um, I need you to do stuff. I have you move two out of the doorway. That would be that would be fantastic. Uh, but it's attack range three for three damage. He has seven health. Um, yeah, I need you to move out of the doorway. You can do three and push, and then move out of the doorway. <laughs> so you will move. You're you're is uh, thirty two. Um, and it this is all Annex got left. Annex gonna have to long rest after this, but he needs to move, move it, move it, and then she's gonna do a melee attack with the ice first stun on that guy. So her initiative is twenty seven. 27, because ice is up. Their initiative is 50. Cool. Please be low. I mean, high. 31. Cool. Cool, cool. Anik goes first. Anik is going to um, move for target one adjacent. Oh, no, no, no. She's going to do a two move so she doesn't lose this card. So one, two. Then she's going to attack three. Burning this to try to stun and get an and get a XP for it. That was a three attack times two is six, and he does need to be stunned. He's dead anyway, but that's fine. He's dead because that he only had he had six he had less than six health, but that kills him. Uh, and he dies. That's where she stops. So she did that, burn that down. Then she did two move. She's doing uh, Archer's turn. Archer's going to move two. And then she is going to gonna reshuffle. And then she is going to attack range five for three damage. <laughs> I think this might be Cyanard to the Brute. <laughs> oh. so she can see him. He is in the doorway. <sighs> Three damage total. He's out. He goes down. He doesn't get the go because he is exhausted. So what does that mean? Do I lose scenario? Nope. Annex on her own. 
So Anik has no more cars. <laughs> um Anik has no more cards. And this is a creature with seven health. Okay, we gotta short rest it. And lose a card. Anik loses. Going invisible, which was exactly what I was looking for this turn. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, all right, I gotta employ some tactics here. I gotta keep her. I gotta. I gotta stun her. Summon some rats, but I gotta stun her. And muddle her. Do I have anything that stuns? Attack range two and stun. That's the only thing I can do. That I need to get in range. And I don't have any. Oh, I do have a top move. I have a move three, attack one, and then attack and stun. Whoo! Here we go! <coughs> Eight! <laughs> Her initiative is 44. So we need to reshuffle this all back in because Annex going first. Might be restarting the scenario. Eek! So the cool thing about restarting scenarios, when you uh, when you lose a scenario, it doesn't mean that you've lost the game. It doesn't even mean death. It just means you start back over where you are. You don't lose money, you don't lose experience, but you don't get, uh, but you lose the check marks that you would have had. So straggler and purist gone. But I would, uh, but I would lose. Those lovely, lovely two check marks. But I get the 6 XP, and getting them to level is important. I got one more room to go, man. One more room. Ugh, this is rough. All right. Here we go. Annex turn. She is going to... Move three, attack one, one, two, three, to put you right in this creature's face. Attack one. Three damage. Uh, this creature doesn't have a shield. Number three. You take three damage. Then she is going to attack again. Range two. So it's with disadvantage when they're in your face. For one damage, and I stun her if I hit her. Where are the goggles? <laughs> minus two and minus three. Complete whiff. Ugh. But I get an experience for it. And this goes up. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, this is going to discard. That's not a discard file. Return to play file. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Plus, I get plus two for this, so she would have actually taken five damage on that melee hit. I forgot about that. So she had two health left when she minus one the movement. So her movement is two, minus one is one, plus one to attack. So Anik is out if she doesn't miss. Anik dies, goes down. And I lost the scenario. So what ends up happening when I lose the scenario? Because I'm getting through the scenario. Get all my cards back. Get all my health back. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't... If she was a regular archer, I would have killed her. But she was an elite archer, and she had seven health, and I had five. I just did five damage on her. Um, it would have been great if, that, if I'd gotten seven in one hit and killed her. But we lose these two items, so we don't get these. They're gone. And then we keep the money, we keep the experience, we lock the door. This money goes back up here. Then we reset. The mind thief might not be who I play with. I might have to create a new cre a new character instead of Anik, but we're gonna give her one more try. He has six health, he has ten. 
has five experience. She has seven. This flips back over. And then we restart the scenario. <laughs> oh, I gotta reshuffle all this. And rewind. <laughs> it was close. It was close. That augment was good. If it wasn't a um that that poison was awful. that's up minus one minus two wow can be like times one plus two or times two plus two which i probably would have killed her with that it was a close one all right <laughs> you came and watched me die um let's see so He's not back yet. I was close to taking her down, but nope. no Seagar. So shuffle them up because the guards are coming up. And then reshuffle this. And we're going to give this another go and see how this goes. That was my terrible accent. All right. Here we go. First up, cleave ability needs to happen. But I need to get you there. This discard ability is not fun. Move six. Shield up. Let's get a shield up because we're learning. And then where's my retaliate? And then we're going to retaliate. So initiative is going to be 18. He's going to prep. For what's to come she is going to vanish <laughs> she's going to go invisible and then she's going to tell a guy to do a thing that's what she's going to do all right so our initiative is going to be 14. their initiative <laughs> how do y'all <laughs> It's like we just started over. I mean, I don't know. It's crazy, right? All right. So their initiative is going to be 70. So she goes first. So she's going to poof, go invisible. And what does invisible mean? Invisible means cannot be attacked and removed at the end of the next turn. So she's like, she's not there. But she's also going to force an enemy within range five. One, two, three, four. Hey, you to attack that guy <laughs> for two damage plus my modifier. So uh, targeting another enemy, so one damage, so that guy takes one damage. What a waste. Um, and that is her turn. Then his turn, he is going to throw up Throw up, blah. Now he is going to put down this. On the next six sources of damage from attacks, I shield one. And then he's going to put retaliate into play for two damage. So if any of them hit him, retaliate two damage. Now they move, um, they move, he moves two, so he only moves one. They move three minus one, so one, two. Wow, what a waste of a turn. <laughs> and that ends his turn. I would have gotten experience if I would have retaliated properly. That is awful. So that ends that. Yeah, that's what I was doing last time. I was turning it up. That ends the round. That was round one. All this stuff's back to normal. We're on to round two. Wow. That was inconvenient. All right, so he still has the shield up, so he's going to step up to the plate. He is going to step up to the plate and start a swing in. So he's going to do the leap and cleave that he needs to get there. Add plus one to all your attack rolls this round. Ooh, cool. Yep, so he'll go initiative 10. She is still, she is invisible, says the end of next round of your next, at the end, remove at end of next turn. So she's still invisible. And what is she going to do with her invisibility? She's going to stun people. <laughs> so she's going to do that. And then she's going to move and attack. 
Her initiative is going to be eight. Their initiative is going to be 15. Still go last, you nerd. So she goes first. She's going to range two, one, two, attack for one damage. And there's the curse. There it is. It came up. It happened. It's a thing. Then she's going to move three and attack for one. For one damage. I'm so angry. <laughs> I'm so angry that happened. And his turn is he's going to do, just do his two movement to step up to the plate. And then he's going to sweep and cleave to hit these two for three damage. Three minus two. One. This guy will live forever. He will not die. He will live forever. Then this guy. Thank you. So that's five minus one because he's shielded. So four damage on number two. This guy's going to live forever. Uh, I get an experience for that. Cleave. And that's it. So, their turn, they shield up, and this poison nonsense is going to happen now. So, they shield up, which doesn't matter because I already went, and then they're going to attack. Here we go. Did I shuffle this? Let me shuffle this, because I'm scared. I'm very afraid! Um, so, here we go. Minus one, so this one's attacking for two. Minus one, one, plus the shield blocked it, which gives him an XP. So all damage negated, no poison for you. This guy's going to attack. I need to put these here so I don't confuse them. This guy's going to attack for, um, he's going to attack for three. Minus one, two block one, one damage, but he gets poison. And then this guy's going to attack for two minus one, one, block that one, but he still takes one damage, so he takes two damage total, so he goes down to three, because of the poison, the plus one. And he gets another XP because of that. There we go. Uh, this wanes. This comes here. Invisibility fades. And now we go. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, oh, I miss Cody so much. I wish I could have taken him into this campaign. Cause this is like perfect range for him to do that sickle and just kill. Um, add plus one to all your attacks this round, yes. And then he needs to find a melee. Three with Pierce. I want to kill that guy. I want him dead. I'm going to come to his house and, you know, the rest of the terms. Initiative 20. She can be seen now. This guy's going to live forever. So let's see if we can do something about that. Um, she can stun somebody. And range somebody. I don't want her to do that. I want her to get this melee. Melee attack. And because that guy's gonna not die. I'll bust out with this move four. So her initiative is gonna be pretty darn high. It's gonna be 75. Oof. Their initiative. Gotta reshuffle. will be 55 and they strengthen awesome you know what strengthens means advantage <laughs> so anyway um he is going to go plus one on all your attacks this round and he is going to do three attack to that guy with pierce four attack five attack goodbye goodbye na 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 so he dies Pierce means I pierced all that stuff, so he, he dies. Their turn at 55, they don't need to move. They're attacking, they get advantage on it. 
So let's do it. One, two. So advantage, that would be two attack, block one, one plus one. So it's two. He goes down to one. And then this one would be on her. It would be two attack. Page two goes down to one. Now, next round. Ooh, boy. Zoom in on um, this one. This. Oh, no, she didn't go yet. Panic didn't go yet. It ain't the end of the next round. Panic didn't go yet. Panic is going to put down her augment to attack this guy for three. Because. Three damage. He actually dies. Who knew? So he's dead. And then she's going to move four. Uh, one, two, three. Right here. Eh, right here. Stop on the coin. Pick up some money on your way. Get out there and be somebody. All right, so her augment's down. That's her movement. Her movement's over. Now the round's over. <laughs> Keep forgetting Anik needs to go. And then it is their turn. So she needs to. She's going to attack for three and um, heal herself. And her initiative will be 11. He will. <laughs> Big bad <pattern> nerd, dude. <laughs> um, he is going to. He is going to, um, what can he do? This is a ranged attack, so he would have to move to do that ranged attack. Yeah, that's what he'll do. That's what he'll do. His initiative will be 15. This guy's initiative will be 15. Doesn't matter, and it goes first. Um, she is going to attack this guy for three, two damage to him. So, oh, and it's a melee attack, plus two. So it's three damage, plus two, five damage, minus one, four damage. So he takes four damage already. Then she is going to heal herself for two, get back up to full, because she is extra swishy. Extra. He has 15, I have 15. This is not Arkham Horror. I'm going first. So um, I'm going to attack him for three. No, 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 no. I'm going to move one. <laughs> then I'm going to attack him for three because I'm using the move instead. So two damage. So that's enough. Dead. Six. Bye-bye. See you later. All right. And... That does that. Hey, we did a lot better. We did a lot better. So we need to prep for what comes next because we're going to have to long rest anyway. So let's get some coins and then see what comes next. So we'll do that. So we'll just waste these turns doing exactly that and long rest. Thing. So you'll move here. You'll move here. They both get the money. He is going to, they're going to long rest. So he gets two health, going back up to three. And he has to get rid of a card. Provoking roar. Bye-bye. He gets his cards back. Anik is going to long rest, but she's at full health. So you're talking, you're wondering about this ability. I know you are. I know you are. What a different start. It is a different start. So you're wondering about this ability. And this ability, you see the symbol here? This means that it goes for the entire scenario. Uh, when another augment is played, then I discard the card. But it's in, but it's for the entire scenario, it's out. So every single time Anik does a Melee attack, she will get plus two until I pull out another augment. And there are other augments that I have. One that does shielding. And 
then that's it. So, <laughs> so she is going to get rid of. Save that. Move three and attack. That is pretty cool. Invisibility might be cool, but not right now. She'll get rid of Into the Night, the invisibility. Okay. They heal up. This doesn't get reshuffled, but they, they heal, they rest, they're good. That's such a waste of a good... Uh, do I have a heal in here for him? Yeah, I do. Okay, so he's going to burn this healing potion. Get rid of this foolishness. That's trash. And then they're going to prep themselves for what comes next. So we're going to get up to the door. And we're going to get whoever's last to open it. Um, no, 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 you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. And do you have anything ranged? Anything. Fantabulous. Um, melee, 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 melee. That's a ranged discard. This is a ranged with stun. But that takes up my movement action. Dang, blast it. Um, but once again, movement action. So we'll have to... I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then range. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do this move three and attack one, which will get me to the door. Then Attack range 2 with a stunner. Initiative 20. I need you to go before her. <laughs> um, he is going to... Barrett will need you to get on the other side of that door and ready to do some work, Barrett. Fire up wind. Fire up wind and retaliate. That's what she'll do. So she, he's going to go first. He's going to go first. Because he's 18, she's 20. So he is going to move up to the door. Fire up wind. He is then going to. He's going to open the door, and I know I'm supposed to wait, but I think I have the makings of a plan. They are here. She is here. And let's get their initiative in there. Unless their initiative is 18, 19, 18 or 19, she goes next. 55 with a strengthen on it. I'm cool with that. Um, oh, wrong thing. Wrong thing. Wrong thing. <laughs> and she is 68. Cool. Cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Let me put this here so I don't get it confused. There. Okay. So then he's going to activate retaliate. So retaliate, if you look here, see that symbol? It's not the infinite symbol. This means it's just for one round, and then it's discarded. So then he's going to have retaliate on. So he's going to ha he's got two more blocks on him and a retaliate going. So that ends his turn. Her turn, she is going to move two, one, two, to the opposite side of the door. And then she is going to range. I thought she would have the range. She doesn't. I could do it. Wait. 
she was here. She can move three. Oh, no, she can't. She would have to move three and then range two. <laughs> I hate to do this just to get this stun. I can't. Ugh. Ugh. Um. If I move her one, two, three in the doorway. Oh no, she would definitely be hit. No, no, no. She's gonna go here. And then uh, she has her move three. She has her attack, range two, fire up cold. This would have been. We'd been on six. And she gains an XP three. And that is that. She doesn't use it because they're not within range. Their turn. Uh, the guards go first. They move two. One, two. One, two. You can't attack through the door. That's all you can do. You strengthen yourselves. So, next time they attack is with disadvantage. Uh, one and two. And then she gets to it. She doesn't move, but she attack range six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But she doesn't move. Thank the maker. So we survive one more round. All right. So next round. This is gone. That wanes. That goes down. It is. Let me look at what what Barrett could do before I look at Anik. Um, Skewer is not really there for me. He can retaliate losing the card. Shield up to gain two experience because the retali this retaliate fell off. Because I thought they would come in the doorway and do something. Their lives. You know what? He's going to lean out the door and shoot you in the face for three. How about that? Next time I'll tell you to come in the room when I tell you to. And then he's going to shield up. Ooh, no. I can kill one, possibly. Depends on what I pull. <laughs> It could be a complete miss. So I'm going to shield up. Uh, your initiative will be 15. All right. So he's going to hit one. You need to deal with the other one, Anik. Um, you are going to... Yeah, that's going to be a thing, but I need you to go first. What do you got? 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 You're just going to do a regular range two attack. Yeah, we can have them kill each other. <laughs> Initiative 11. Archer. Archer. Will do. Will do, will do, will do. Archer will do 16. Ooh, that was close. And <laughs> they will go 30. That was really close. Okay, so first up is Anik. And Anik's going to be like, hey, dude. Punch that dude with advantage, because you get to attack with advantage. Muhahaha. <laughs> Starting another enemy you're controlling. So, yay. Woohoo! So that is 2 plus 1, 3 damage to that guy. So this guy takes, number 1 takes 3 damage. And then, um, she is going to... Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> she is going to do em uh, empathic assault on that guy who just did. And she's going to attack him for four, range five, to disarm and power up and get two experience. So, eight. Bye. <laughs> That kills him. Not, not disarmed. That kills him. I get two experience, so I'm up to five. And then Cold goes back up, and I discard this card for play. And this one goes into it. That was awesome. <laughs> then, hey, it's Barrett's turn. So Barrett's going to lean out the door and attack that guy for three. Two damage. So 
So he takes two, so he's at five. He's got one health left. And I get an experience for it. And then he's going to shield up. <laughs> yeah, the Mind Thief is cool if I could get it working the way I want. It's, it, it's really interesting. Okay. Archer's turn. Archer gets... Her movement is two. Now it goes to three. One, two, three. But you still can't see through that door, nerd. So you don't get to hit... You go. You get to hit nobody. Um, the guard though does. So the guard gets to move here, and then the guard is going to attack Barrett, like I want him to, and he gets to attack with advantageo, so plus two. So I'm going to negate those two with the shield and one of these, giving me another experience. So I negate that too. However, I do take. Two, da uh, two damage. He's down to one. Cool, I've got one more push on this before it's gone. And discarded from game. That ends the round. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. He doesn't have a shield. I can for three. I can retaliate. Retaliate. Attacker suffers damage. So that's coming to her. I need to get to her. This move four, attack three would be attack for two, target all enemies, move through. Ooh, that will be perfect. Move four with jump, attack two, target all enemies, move through. One, two, three, four. And then I will do four damage more. For initiative of 72, this is going to be hard to do, pull off, but if I do, it'll be great. Um, he, uh, Anik is going to do an attack three to kill that guy. Uh, he needs to kill and move. That's what she needs to do. I can attack, move four. And then um, attack again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Of course, she can't get there. She can't get there just yet. Um, so what she's going to do is she is going to... Let's see. I don't want to lose. I'll do the move for... Yeah, I'll do the move four. So her initiative will be 29. Oops. It's getting close to her to take a nap. Um, the archer's initiative is going to be 68. Guards, 15. The guards go first. He shields up. And then he's going to attack and try to do this poison nonsense again. Oh, you already did this with your advantage. That's gone. And then he's going to try to poison. So, block that one extra, discarding this card. So, you take two damage, going down to five. And you are poisoned yet, stinking again. Okay. But I think you have a heal in here, so we can get rid of that. Um... That's the guard. Then it is Anik's turn. Got to reshuffle. Hey, Rory, how you doing? I had to, um, I lost the first one. Uh, I lost the first one, so I restarted, but I'm doing moderately better. So we'll see how I do. Um, so... All right, Anik. Anik is going to attack that guy for two. So two damage goes to him, which is enough to kill him. He dies. Drops a coin. Then she can... She's got to take this flare. So you tag for two. Oh, I get an XP for me for a time. 
and then she she can move for if at the end and if I end the movement the same hex model all targets move through but one two three four uh, this person's gonna get a plus one to damage which will put her at four damage to Anik. I can't risk it. I can't risk it. Nope, I can't risk it. Anik's not gonna do anything with that. The archers go. The archer doesn't move. She just range attacks, but no, no can doesville. No can doesville. Um then he is going to oh, I don't want to lose this. This does not work out how I thought it would. I would lose trample if I do this. So I can do If I lose trample, if I do jump for four, one, two, three, four, it'll get there, and then I do four damage to her, but she's at seven. And I'm poisoned. Mm, this one did not work out how I wanted it to go. And Anik just has two cards left. I don't think you could do anything. Because you'd be wide open to a nasty blast that could kill you, so nope. He's just gonna stand there and be dumb. Duh duh. The end. Um all right. Anik, because she lost her check marks. I can recover two cards using the minor stamina potion, I can ret recover two cards from my discard pile. Do I want to do that now? Yes, I do. Well, let me see what I got. I can move for attack two. I can tell somebody to kill it to hit their friend, but I'm not in that zone yet. But I can move for attack two. Do I have a nice ranged? I got one range for a stun. So, yeah, I'm going to use it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab Fearsome Blade and Preserve from the discard pile. Now, her turn, she is going to try to go first. So she is going to, because this is crazy, I need to kill this lady. Um, I can do a double attack. I can move four attack two, so I'll attack her. And then... I'll attack her again for five. And this wean, 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 wean. <laughs> so your initiative will be 27. So I don't confuse him. Your last go, my good man. You can do nothing. This might be up to Anik. <laughs> you can do nothing. Um, no, I might have you move six. And then attack. So your initiative is going to be 20. Archer. We're, we're doing, we're doing okay. Doing okay, I guess. Sort of okay. Less okay. All right. All righty. Archer is 32. You're dead. So he goes first. He's going to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then he gets an experience for that. And he discards the card from play. And then he's going to attack for two. Two damage goes to you, number three, two damage. And that ends his turn. He has to sit down and think about his life. Anik is going to move four. One, two, three, four. He's going to attack 
for two. Two damage, which is four. Plus two because it's a melee, which is actually six. So two. Yep, plus two for the melee for the mind weakness. And then she and she gets two experience. Oh my gosh. Her experience is extreme. Uh but she gets two more experience. And then she's gonna attack again with this upper one with this to stun. Minus one, three, two. That's enough. Doesn't matter. You're dead. Bye bye. See you later. And she gets some experience. So this card goes away. She gets one XP, so she goes up to three. Look at that, I lived! I killed her and I lived! Alright. So now this all was there. Yeah, this has to get reshuffled. I'll reshuffle this. So there is a door that I didn't show you that is here to get into this area. And not only is there a door, not only is it there a door, there is traps. And that's why I got these lovely dice to indicate that they do three damage. Traps do three damage on level one. So she did her thing. They're both gonna take a breather. <laughs> and they're gonna he's gonna long rest. He's gonna get seven back. Then he's gonna lose a card. She is going to take that time as well. Then we need to decide how we're gonna do this. So there are traps where they would take damage unless they have jump. So that means that if I'm going to use jump, I'm going in this room to see what this means and triggering the effect. <laughs> the make dinner came back at the right time. You did, Kate. You did. So um, this means that whatever they pick, have, both of them have to have jump to get over. Or, or maybe we can... Ah, uh, if I only had Cody, I could pull. And I, you know I like trap pinging, so... All right, so let's take a look at what cards really we're losing. He's lost a lot of cards. He's lost three, so this is all he's got left until he's exhausted. So whatever's behind this door, we need to take care of it, and we need to kill all enemies as our goal. So, eee, goodness. I don't know what lies behind this door. Uh, so let's see. Something with a jump. Something with oh, I gotta lose. I gotta lose a card. Um, no, that might be helpful. I need to be able to heal. The attack might be helpful. Shielding might be helpful. This might be a wild card. This has jump on it. So I've got two ones with retaliate. Retaliate two for both, but the shields go up. One gives XP, one doesn't. But this one has a heal. So that might be a gone card. I need to be able to heal. Um, I don't know if anything will have shielding. But the three damage seems legit. This Where X is the number of hexes you have moved. So if I got a big move, so the worst I can do is three damage right now. It's a 77. I'll get rid of that. People will be like, no, don't do it. No, I'll do it. And then I'll have bigs. Uh, you said. You said, well. Uh, let's see what we'll move. The movements. Do I get do I get back my invisibility? No, I lost it, which would be perfect right now. I need something with jump. So you got jump. That'll work. Got a stunner. An enemy to attack your best friend. Move three and attack. Summons. So you guys get to see summons coming soon. That's what I planned. That's what I was holding off for. So it's between these two. A loot two. Or an 
attack three or a move and attack. I'm thinking. I don't know. I know the summon is staying because that's something I'm going to use. I know the attack your friend is something I'm going to use. Attack three, add plus two and gain for each negative condition on the target. I have no negative conditions on my target. Oh, poison. Ooh. Good time to use poison. So, add plus two and gain one experience for each negative condition. So, I can make this a five hit. So, she can. But it's a close range, which means you need to get there. So, the jump is important. The feedback loop staying. This can work. That can work. That summon can work. So it's down to these two of frigid apparition or scurry. Frigid apparition has a move four, target one adjacent enemy to stun. And it's just a stun. So I'm going to get rid of scurry. All right. She has basically three turns. And <laughs> she's done. Uh, so we got that. What we're going to do first, we have to avoid these traps. I don't want y'all getting hurt. So we can do a move. Let's let the big dude in the door first. Um, he can... The retaliate attacker suffers damage. That could work. All right, so he needs to get in. Get in, get on with his life. So he's going to do the move three with the jump to get through the door. And then he will let's see what's in range that he can hit for three damage. So he's uh, 27. Uh, she needs to jump. So she needs something with jump and muddle for the four. And then um, she will get anything range, girly. She'll summon. So 79. So he goes first. Here we go, folks. So this one actually has audio. So we're going back to Foreteller for what's about to happen. Hey, Brian, how's it going? I was afraid I was going to miss the entire stream. Uh, let's see. So we're going to go, he's going to go three. One, two, three, and let's read what happens. Back to Foreteller. Kicking through the door, you find yourself face to face with the reason these bandits chose this particular hole to nest in. Animate bones, unholy abominations of necromantic power. Nothing more to do but lay them to rest, along with the remainder of this troublesome rabble. Skeletons, skeletons. So we've got, oh, and we've got stuff. We've got furniture. Those are tables. Tables block it as obstacles. Skeletons here and here. And oh my goodness, I thought they were going to say that they were elite. <laughs> I was going to be very, very sad. Uh, where did I put those? Hey, broken tokens, where did I put that? There they are. Hey. And two archers. Uh, need another archer for the box. From the broken token box. And we also have. Also have. There you are. 
a chest here. And, and, <laughs> it's a lot of setup. Three coins here. Yep, that's where we are. So he landed three there, and then he ranged three. That, that was a good idea. He's going to get an experience for that range uh, when pops up. He's going to get experience for that range. But let's see if he can hit. Two damage. Uh, skeletons. Got to get them out on the board. Skeletons have... Five health. They have four arms. They can hit stuff, and they're shielded. Why? The game's hard enough. Anyway. Uh, he shielded, so it would have been three, two, one with the shield on number three. And he has five health. <laughs> I say again, he has five health, and you get an expert. All right. Oh, there. Let me get their stuff going. So the bandit's done. Actually, I don't need to cover you. The bandit guards are gone, finally. And we've got the archers who are back, which I'll shuffle, and the living bones, which I'll shuffle. Yeah, they're they're not hard. Why archers with them? That's that's the only thing I want to know. Let's make it hard. Seventy four, and archers. Please be like eighty. 56. Oh boy. Okay, so um, he finished his turn. Everybody goes before Anik. So. Archers go first. They have a range of four. Two, three, four. They don't move, so suck it, archers. But the zombies go next. But the zombies go next. The living bones. They have a movement of three. So, yeah. So, yeah. And then they're going to attack for one. Target one enemy with with all attacks. So one. Oops. One damage two because of that stupid thing. Then the other one attacks two plus one three. So he's down to two health. Just like that. Okay, Annex turn. Four. One, two, three, four. And then she is going to summon a rat swarm. I can't find my magical stuff right. Oh, wait, did I find it? Nope, I can't find my magical stuff right now. So she will. Uh, have to use her brain thingy. And they have six health. They attack. Range for two and they inflict poison. And I get two experience for summoning them, so... Might have to start this session over again, but we'll see how it goes. Next round. Wayne's. Dude, you have got to go first. Um... He's a eat. He's going to retaliate with shield and shield up. And then he's going to heal himself. Initiative 18. You've got to go first. Anik will he'll try to go first. Yeah. Yeah, she'll try. Hmm. 
Stun one of them. Nope, I'm gonna make them attack each other. Initiative eight. Initiative eight. Here we go. <laughs> I'm so buying Forteller for Gloomhaven. Yeah, I love Fort Forteller is amazing. Twenty. Ah, uh, and sixty-eight. Okay. Here we go. And it goes first. Annex going to, well, first, her summon is going to attack with her modifier, so it's attacking a skeleton for two times two, four damage. That's good, but bad. <laughs> so four damage on skeleton number three. So it's up to five. Oh, it dies. They only have five health. So, and then it's going to, and then she is going to she's going to tell one, two, three, four this guy. She's going to be like, hey, 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 that dude. Kill him, please. Kill him, please, because they have a range of four. One, two, three, four, which is perfect. She's going to be like, shoot that guy for me. And so, yeah, so that is a shot of two, three damage to that skeleton. Uh, number four. And then she can't do anything else right now, so that will end her turn. She's going to have to short rest. Go again. He goes next. Come on, my dude. Um, he can kill that guy, but he can't kill those archers. Um, he is going to heal himself for two, going up to four. And then he's going to activate the retaliate with shield two. And pop a play. Um, and that ends his turn. The living bones is going to attack. So... Here's how we resolve. He's going to move minus two, so they, they only move one, but he doesn't need to move. He's going to attack for one. I, sh I retaliate, and I shield that one block. Oh, and I'm supposed to get two XP. And this is the most experience I've gotten in like a game of Gloomhaven ever. But I retaliate for two, which is enough to kill him. Um, then the archers go. The archers have a range plus of one, one. So they shoot four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So here we go. Plus two on Enik, which is, they do two damage, so four. So she's down to two health. Minus one on Barrett, who shield is two. They hit for two. Minus one, one. Shield one, nothing. Oof, perfect. So, this is for all the tea. <laughs> so, here we go. She is going to short rest to get something back so she could do with. I would long rest her, but she will not live. So she's going to short rest. <laughs> just to think. I think it's, it's just the combination I'm getting used to. The Mind Thief is a different character. She's a melee glass cannon. If I would have picked, picked the Cragheart or the Spellweaver, I'd have been burning through people. But I wanted to try something different. So no harm, no foul. Uh, this, what do I lose? I lose my move four with jump, which is what I really needed. But she still has her, hey, you attack this person card. And she is going to use that so much. So, so much. So she's going to make her initiative eight. <laughs> um, he has two cards left. He can move four. One, two, three, four, which will get him there. 
And then he's going to attack four to stun. I got to kill these creatures. Um, yep, he's going to be discarding two cards to do this. His initiative is 15. Living bones are gone. They have to reshuffle. So 15 and 8. Boy, nerve racking. Here we go. Oh, this, this guy's discarded. Here we go. 29. And it goes first. And she says, Hey, you. Punch that other one in the face. Minus one and zero. So it's with disadvantage because they're close range. It would have been two, but it's one damage better than nothing. So number three takes one. And then um, she is going to move her swarm. They have a movement speed of one. And that ends her turn. Um, then his turn, he is going to move four with jump. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Did I get rid of that card? Nope, I didn't. So if he survives, it's coming out. And then he's going to attack for four. Stun two, or sorry, stun one. So attack for four. No! <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I do not want to talk about it. So they are going to attack. So they have movement, so they can move here. I'm going to have them attack. So they're going to actually, this is where you can game the, game the system here. They're going to attack these guys, the summons. They're both going to attack the summons. And they're going to attack the summons because I said so. So the first one's going to do it. So that is two damage to the summons. It has six health. So it's down to four. Oh, God. And then the next one's going to attack the summons. So that is three to the summons. So it's down to one health. That's how I mitigate. And it's immobilized, so it can't move. The summons cannot move. All right. Oh my gosh, why did that happen? Why did that happen? He is going to short rest. Please keep the cleave. Please keep the cleave. Please, 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 please. 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 Everything. Please. Please. Which one's the cleave? I don't know. The retaliate. The heal's gone, which is sad, but he has that cleave that he's going to do and then he's going to shield up for sure or he could do the move through no you need to go first you need to go first so um i could do the move through at jump four one two one two three Four, so I can attack one guy twice. No, I need the shield. I need the shield. I'm being greedy. I'm being greedy. Let me be smart. Be smart, Kanji. So, 15 initiative. She is going to long rest. This is it for her. This is all she's got. My move four is gone. Awesome. Do I have any more movement? I don't, so she's only gonna... Uh, all right, that's all she's got, and then she's exhausted. So, um, when does this get removed? Remove at end of next turn, so. They are going to go. Twenty-nine. 
The same immobilized nonsense. Okay, so... She goes first. She's gonna be like, hey, you attack you. So minus one each, so it's one damage again to this one, so it's two. And that's all she's... And then that thing's immobilized, so it can't go. He's lay tired. Um, yeah, that's all she's got. Uh, let's see. His turn, he is going to come on. First attack, four damage. Kills you. You're dead. Second attack, four damage. A number four. Then I'm going, and I got an experience for that, which is four. And then I shield up. <sighs> okay. Their turn. Move. I'm going to have you attack that creature again. The so plus one, you kill the, my, you kill the swarm. They're dead. That ends that. Now. This is all you got. This is all the T. I'm going all in for a 27. Epic times. Epic times. 32. Both of them are attacks. Boy. Boy, oh boy. So, move four, attack two, target all enemies, move through to get two experience, plus one experience to get this experience boost thing going. So, I'm gonna move here and stop. Pick this up. Four, uh, that is four, uh, two damage to you. That's enough. It dies. Thank God. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Oh! Yay, and I get two experience for that. That's sick. And then this one doesn't happen. So I'll take a long rest. Uh, did I lose something? Yep, I lost this guy. And this was a shield up. So I've got one more thing left. I'm going to that chest. It's happening. I'm going to uh, actually long rest so I can make sure I get to that chest. And I'll discard the shield. And a long rest, get up to six. That's right, greed is in effect because I learned not to skip chess. And then I'll do my movement of three. One, two, three. Stop on the chest, get it, and I'm done. Scenario over. So three. This is number seven in the book of bookiness. Um, let's see what number seven is. Treasure index. Number seven is random side scenario. Nice. Okay, so I got a random side scenario that I need to remember, and I beat it. So let's go to Foreteller and see what happens. With the last bandit dead, you take a moment to catch your breath and steel yourself against the visions of living remains ripping at your flesh. Your target is not among the dead, and you shudder to think what horrors still await you in the catacombs below. Hey, we did it! We did it! Okay, so let's get some information on our sheets here. Look at this broken, so this is the broken token module for characters when you get them. So this is all their cards and stuff and their modifier plus bonus, some cubes go in here. So, and you fit all of this in here and then they kind of, and then they stack on top of each other. So if you're like, I don't want to pack them back into the box, and I want them to be ready to play, which is what I'm going to be doing. Barrett is going to be in here, and so is Anik. And then we'll just kind of stack them up. So let's take a, a, a gander at Barrett and see how his experience went. So according to the book of Grandios book, no stuff and things and the like, 
Uh, scenario levels. So we get six bonus experience for completing the scenario because we're on level one. And what you can do, let me zoom this in a little. So if you're feeling like insanely crazy and powerful and you're like, I'm gonna go to the level four scenario, then the monster level is four and they do more damage the higher you go. The goal conversion is four. Trap damage is six instead of three. And, but you get 12 bonus experience. So for people who are way better at this game than me, they go at higher levels. I'm not, I'm a level one guy. So um, I get six bonus experience. So let me get out my, I don't wanna mess up Annex stuff. I look over Barrett and get the pencil. So I get six plus what I got here. So basically he got six times four, 24 experience for this. And the goal conversion is each one of these is worth two. So two, four gold. So I have to get the 45 to level up. I'm halfway there, living on a prayer. Take my hand. I'll stop. I'll stop now. Anik, <laughs> because of this, Anik gets um, six experience times. It, it would be 24, but she got the five there, so it's 23. So Anik gets 23 experience. And she has two, four, six, eight, ten gold. And that's what to record to start. Because we failed the scenario the first time, the check marks are no longer valid. So I don't get the checks. And if I did, and when I do, I will explain to you what the checks are. They're perks that let you mitigate this modifier deck so it's not as terrible. And if you watch the um, Jaws of the Lion playthrough, you'll see how I utilize them to become omnipotently powerful and um, great. All right, so that happened. Oh, and I get a random scenario. Random scenario. So let's go to the scenario box. Let's pick this out. So this guy, nope, that's the random maps. That guy, nope, that's the random monsters. Uh, there is a random scenario thing in here somewhere. See how I'm putting out like all the broken token stuff? It's a lot. It's a lot for what you can fit. I can actually fit Jaws of the Lion in here if I want it. Um, in this entire box so I don't have two separate boxes, which is great. This is all the stuff I can buy eventually. Right now, I can only buy what's here. So I'll be able to unlock all this stuff. This is... Is this the random scenarios? see what the books I'm learning too because like I said Jaws of the Lion teaches you some of Gloomhaven well most of Gloomhaven but not all of it and I'm just making sure that these are the random scenarios uh let's see this book so this book I have to tell you is confusing as heck as I know how to read it now because I played Jaws of the Lion but prior this book is insanely confusing. This is why I tell people, if you're going to get into this game, play Jaws of the Lion first. Otherwise, you're going to be like, what is all this? This book is too thick. I don't want to play this. It does not look like fun when this game is insanely fun. Uh, random side scenario. Yep, that's what those cards are. So we take these. We shuffle them up. These are random side scenarios. So whenever we get another random side scenario, we'll pull from here. And we're going to go to the sticker board because I like stickers. Sticker time. All right. So our random side scenario is going to be scenario 71, the windswept highlands. He's back in here. This off the table. And I'll bring, if, if y'all are interested, at the end of, um, as soon as I do the stickers, I can show you all the entire Gloomhaven box just to really show you how it would scare you for someone just getting into this and just being like, I'm not going to play this game. But how Jaws of the Lion makes it so worth it. All right, so all that money I did not get. Nope. If you don't pick it up, it's gone. You don't get it. All right, so move Anik and Barrett off. Move this off. So Barrick has to complete four scenarios in Gloomhaven. 
So I have to be in the city to complete those scenarios. All right, let's get the map. Do this story. Find the map, find the map, find the map, find the map, find the map. Gloomhaven. Okay. Sticker time! So let's get stickers and look at all those stickers that I'm going to be putting on this game. So the black barrel is here. That's where we started off, as you can see that sticker there. The scenario that we just got was 71, so get 71, and it goes on K5, K5, there's 71, you see that lovely little dot, so we're going to put this right here, and then all you do is just cover it, simple enough, so it goes right there, that's scenario 71. So that's our random scenario that we have, and, and, and then we completed the scenario and this scenario has links to the barrel layer which is number two so this is an interesting thing in jaws of the lion everything was kind of its own separate thing even though there was a long even though there was a campaign and a story each combat lets you step back out into the city and doing that means that you drew a city card right in in gloomhaven proper if you're in the city and that happens, you draw a city card. If, you're, if you go back to the city and then come back, you draw a city card and then you do a road card. If you, can, if you say, now nah, I'm just going to press forward and see where this takes me, you make sure that it says something that says, and let me hold this up for you to see. It says link. You see that link right there? If that link is there, you don't have to walk anywhere else or draw any of the travel cards. You just go to the next scenario, which is the barrel layer. And I need to get that sticker, which this is part of the campaign. So barrel air, number two. Number two goes right there. And that's number two, the barrel air, because it's connected. And so next time we play, because if I didn't die, we would have played it this time. Um, we, will, uh, we will play and see the barrel air. So um, let's go back up to the top. Let's talk some Gloomhaven. Let me answer any questions that you might have about Gloomhaven proper. And we will, and then I'll let you enjoy your evening. So I got a side scenario plus that. I'm going to be playing a side scenario. Wee! Okay, so let's go up. All right. So Gloomhaven is awesome. I enjoyed it. Um, the Mind Thief was a little rough only because I don't have range. Leonard was range. He was my hatchet. Leonard was clutch. Anik was clutch because she got the times two twice, but her range wasn't really there. Uh, Barrett was strong. He liked to hit things, and it worked. I don't know if they mesh well. I think in a three-player game, Anik would shine. So I may say bye-bye to Anik for the next playthrough. Uh, um, let's just say they'll walk back to Gloomhaven and then come back to finish the barrel layer doing a, a city and road event. I have to think about it. I may say goodbye to Anik because two melee characters, I will not be successful. So I might pick up the Spellweaver because just get some magic in there so y'all can see that happen. Or another character that no, I don't see a lot of people playing. So. We'll see what goes with that um, when we do it. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> is, is that an older version? My character cards don't look like this because I have dials. Oh, the dials. I have the dials too. Um, these are the dials. Oh, you cannot see my table. <laughs> uh, these are the dials. So I've had, I have the dials here. Um, my thing of it is I don't like using this. I, I just don't because one, tell me, tell me what health they're on right now. Tell me how much XP they have right now. You don't know. I mean, now you can see it's 10, but let me spin it. How much XP do they have now? So I don't like using the dials because it, you're playing this game with me and you can't see how much health they have. So I use these big old dice with pips so you can see exactly how much health they have. So that's what I chose to use. Um, the elemental board is something I got from Etsy. 
So this is why this doesn't look like the elemental board uh, people have. But dice is an easy way for you you all to be like, no, they, no, Kanji, he had four health instead of two. You messed up. So there, there's no shenanigans happening with the dice with the massive pips. And that's why I ordered them so you guys can see with me. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? And they do take up less room, Kate. That is correct. Uh, let's see. So what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Were there, um, that's why I don't use the dials. Um, were there any questions surrounding for people who saw, you know, they haven't played Gloomhaven and they're looking at it for the first time and thinking that this is daunting? It's not. It's really not. Um, Jaws of the Lion, I, I highly, highly recommend if you're going to play this game, which, Steven, play this game. It's good. Play, uh, get Jaws of the Lion first. Um, for those in the US, they're in Target if you can find them. For those in Canada, I think they're releasing at the end of the month or the end of September. I believe that's coming out. I don't know. I, I haven't reached out to my UK friends, but my Australian friend says that it's not there yet, and I think it might be there a little bit later this year. So um, for the UK, I don't know when y'all will get it, if you have it already. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't checked that. But um, Canada, uh, people from Canada should be getting it at the end of either this month or next month. And the U.S. can go pick it up at Target now. It's a, it's, it is in your, um, in your flag store in Canada. You just don't have the money yet. Yeah, yeah. So if it's in the stores, then you can pick it up. But I highly, yeah, make it happen, Stephen. You will love this game. It's, Jaws of Lion is a great entry. The book walks you through everything. It says, do this now, do this now, do this now. And then by the time you get into scenario three, you're on, you, you know what to do and you're good. Um, if you want, if you have any questions, let me know, ping me. Um, if you saw that I made a mistake, let me know in the comments. Um, this, so the stream's gonna be a little bit weird. Let me head back up to the top here. So the streams are gonna be a little bit weird for the next couple of weeks, right? Because I'm preparing to move. So there's a lot of packing, a lot of boxes, a lot of time being used up, which is why I didn't do Deep Madness Sunday. So I apologize for that. Um, I have one, one more stream this week. And then next week I'm doing Gloomhaven on Monday. And then I'm gonna do a very nice surprise of a game that, that, that I wanted to share um, on Wednesday. And then that's it for the week. And then I move and try to get everything set up so that I, the following Monday, I can be back into Monday, Thursday, Sunday. So um, bear with me. I'm sorry if like you were expecting Deep Madness Sunday. I told my patrons what happened, but I wasn't able to communicate it out to the community, so my bad. Um, yeah, surprise game. It is a surprise game that I have, and I, I'm, I'm excited to play it. Um, so we'll see, you'll see that, um, I'll put up the stream notes for that on probably Friday because I'll be packing Sunday. So <laughs> probably Friday, I'll put up the, um, the streams for next week so you can see what's coming, but I'll be doing Gloomhaven, um, scenario two, and then, uh, I may switch out the mind thief. Maybe. I, I think I need to because two, it, I like her, but. I like Anik a lot, but it's not gelling well with... I need ranged. Without ranged, I'm, I'm dead in the water. So I'm, I might pick the Crag card. I might pick the Spellweaver. I don't know, but I'm going to pick somebody. I might pick another one of the ones, that, uh, the Tinkerer. Who knows? So we'll see what happens. Um, but other than that, I want to thank you all for coming. Foreteller. Thank you for that. That was amazing. I look forward to hearing more and more of it throughout the scenarios. Yep, Foreteller. I mean, like I said, it's 15 bucks for the entire Gloomhaven campaign. But for people who aren't going to be buying Gloomhaven, they're going to be getting Jaws of the Lion. It's 7 bucks for the entire audio of Jaws of the Lion. Foretell is free. 7 bucks gets you there. Uh, you'll be able to change characters in a couple of scenarios. Yeah, but I... I don't want to, my, my thing is, I don't mind a challenge, but if I'm ice skating uphill, I don't want to do that, right? Yeah, thanks, Kate. <laughs> so enjoy, everyone. Um, Patreons, big hearts, love you so much. Thank you so much for supporting me. The blue table mat that you saw was you. The tilt of the camera that you saw was a nice small little piece. That was you. So um, 
thank you so much. I appreciate it a ton. Um, thank you to my subscribers who, who are getting me to my goal. So thank you so much. But other than that, insert comment here. Everybody, have a good night.